Hello there. I've had a lot of messages in the last week going, where have you gone? Everything's gone crazy. Help. And well, to be honest, I just haven't had a chance to get anything made. You see, I'm still in New South Wales and I'm here in Australia until Sunday and then back straight into it when I hit the ground running Sunday afternoon. So it's been a little bit hectic. But while I'm here, I'm not getting all the news updates that I would normally get while I'm at home. And on top of that, there's been a lot of news updates. Now, our government has now been in power for two and a half, three weeks, and it's been mental. Like There were two cabinet leaks in that time frame. Just a couple of days ago, we had the acting prime minister, because Chris Luxon was over here in Australia for his daughter's graduation, get up and tell people he refused to answer questions in Today or Māori because it's not democratic, and in the same sentence, tell a female member of parliament to sit down and shut up because she's not allowed to talk those Amarai rules. Picking and choosing the kind of things from Māori that he wants to work for. You've got interviews with Shane Jones rolling his eyes over the uh, version of the Tiriti that he wants to listen to, and turning around and saying things like, we are going to go and mine and gas and coal and all those kind of things on Department of Conservation land. Yeah, it's that kind of thing that just sort of becomes very overwhelming. Now, let me give you a really clear example of it. In the first couple of days after this government was sworn in, the first of two leaks occurred from within Cabinet. That showed that Workplace Relations Minister Brooke Van Velden was choosing to ignore advice from the government that said that the fair pay agreement is actually going to really help Māori, Pacifica, uh, young people and women. It's really good for making sure you get things like pay equality. It's a law that's in place in several other places, like here in Australia. But she ignored that. In fact, her exact words were she was choosing to ignore it, which is a little concerning. At the same time, though, we've now got notification from her in a speech that she gave that she felt that human life cost too much during COVID. We put too high a value on it and we should lower the value of human life, which automatically shows that she really doesn't give a shit about people and how much they do and how much they mean to other people. So there's this whole big kerfuffle about one of the trade unions saying, you know, you put somebody like her in charge of workplace relations, you might as well put a vampire in charge of a blood donation bank. And you can see where that analogy comes from, but that creates a whole bunch of fuss. And then it still goes to Parliament, where you have a speech from the throne, where they actually mention that they're going to be repealing it. And then just yesterday, they did. They had their third reading and repealed the Act. And then the government turns around and says, well... Nobody's really going to mind because the act hadn't been put in place yet, so nobody really saw the benefits of having it, which meant that they knew the whole time that there was a benefit to having this act, and they've worked their ass off to make sure that nobody gets to see it. That's just one thing, and we've had three weeks of it. And when you're traveling and you're not getting updates all the time from all the news stories, it is really hard to make content about it, but it's really important that people are paying attention to what's going on because this government has set out 49 things it wants to do in the first 100 days and of that, maybe one is okay and that is increasing the age for free breast cancer screenings. The rest of it is basically repealing anything Labour did while selling you at the same time that Labour didn't achieve anything. It's hectic. So when people ask me, where have you gone? I've gone to Australia temporarily and I will be back next week. And then we will do some deep dives and then it'll be Christmas and hopefully people have a bit of a break and catch their breath because 2024 is going to be a big one for all of us everywhere. So please, please try and have a bit of a break and enjoy things while you can because next year is going to be a big one for people to step up and say what they do and don't believe in.